have been challenged. A dirty gauntlet have been slapped around my face and thrown to the floor. Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. And as many as you know, I run a, um, a, a group on Facebook all about Kerbal Space Program. And Ian Carter threw down the challenge of getting to the Mun, making a landing and coming back all in the stock, non-tweaked, um, perfect Kerbal X spacecraft that comes with the game. I'm sure many of you have tried to use it to get into orbit before and normally that is the sole purpose of it is to get into orbit, have a little pot around up in space and then come back. But a couple of days ago Ian put posted up on the group that he had done this and laid down the gauntlet to anyone who thought they were good enough to do the same. Uh, I've got to say watching Ian's video was an absolute masterclass on how to conserve Delta V. Uh, I had done Oh, I don't know, 12? Yeah, probably about a dozen attempts at this mission before having a look at Ian's uh, video properly because, yeah, I wanted to come at it with my own skill set. And I, I just I just could not do it. At the end of this video, I'm going to go through a, a few of my failed attempts, the, the, the more spectacular ones, and, you know, show you what it's all about. But anyway, this section right here is the hardest part of this mission. Now, many of you know that I have trouble getting um, things into orbit with like reasonable delta V values. Uh, I, my my um, gravity turn is far too late. I, I always seem to overshoot a lot. And this entire challenge is about tight super tight i really cannot stress how tight your orbits need to be to get this done properly like you will notice here that i've made sure my apple apps goes no higher than 75 kilometers and indeed uh my periaps actually went a little bit below the atmosphere thankfully just grazing the top of it and not really providing any major drag sources to worry about so i'm going to set up my my maneuver node because obviously we're playing in sandbox and one of the beauties of sandbox is you get the maneuver nodes to pre-plan your orbits we're not just doing it all by the seat of our pants like in um a career mode and, and and what I've done here is set up a, a basic transfer as well as I can and then I'm just going to slide it around my orbit trying to find the perfect point uh, for making the perfect transfer. Obviously you know, I, could, I could go online, I could find all the different um, calculators, I could work out to the like 37th decimal place which degree of, of the, the orbit I'm supposed to go around. But I find just sliding the maneuver note back and forth across the orbit works quite well as well. Um, and then we make massive use of the SAS. Uh, being able to like point it towards the maneuver node was uh, invaluable, absolutely most invaluable. Back, back in the day when we couldn't do things like this, I should imagine that I would be like shedding hundreds of meters a second delta V all over the place, just because I'm quite a sloppy rocket scientist, I suppose we could say. If, if there is such a thing as a rocket, uh, as a sloppy rocket scientist, I am definitely one of them. And just to prove my point, right now in the in the video, you can see the point where we are just dipping into the atmosphere. This this was a little bit annoying for me because I was uh, kind of expecting to time warp my way around the entire orbit and then suddenly I found myself with no music and uh, tiny, tiny amounts of drag applied to me, which was vexing, but definitely dealable. Okay, so we're coming up to uh, the place where I want to do the maneuver burn right now. And of course, uh, as I'm sort of got very little fuel left in this big stage and then have a staging to do. I had to make my burn a lot earlier than the maneuver node said I would. The, the, these are things that are pretty standard to almost any interplanetary or interbody mission. Somewhere that involves more than one stage, you're going to end up having to split a uh, maneuver node across a couple of stages. So you, you, you do learn to take these sort of things into account and, and there we go. This is something I did take into account. It seemed to have gone quite well. Uh, so what I'm doing now is doing the little clicky thing on the Mun Perry apps and just trying to get that down as low as possible. The clicky thing obviously being the one where you click on the, 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 the node marker and it continues to display the altitude and how long you've got left until then. Uh, and I use that a lot to help me in this particular challenge, trying to get as low to the moon as possible on this um, first maneuver burn. I think saves me a lot of delta fit. I don't know whether it does or not. Obviously, I'm not an actual rocket scientist. I just do all this intuitively, as I'm sure most Kerbal players do. You just kind of eyeball it and hope for the best, right? But the transition over to the Mun um, sphere of influence work went well. And you can see here, this little vessel in the background is actually one of my previous attempts. This is, this is one of the ones that managed to get down onto the Mun and take off again. Um, but he is stranded there in that orbit with absolutely no fuel. Um, 
Right, so we, we come down, and the moment I hit periaps, and in fact, about three or four seconds beforehand, I started hitting, um, hitting the thrust, because we really wanted to come down. But the main point was to not nullify it all right where I was. Uh, just bring it so that we're, we're, the orbital arc that we're using is going over something like a quarter of the Moon's surface, and then get much further down that arc towards the, uh, towards the planet. Letting gravity do the work for you, basically, because we don't want to nullify everything and then have to wait for the gravity, because one of the things you are nullifying, even if you are pointing directly horizontal, is gravity because you never point directly horizontal or at least I don't anyway back to that sloppy ro rocket scientist thing again right so first milestone of the uh, flight complete down and we've hit our, our orbit I did a little quick save here kind of wish I hadn't at that point because I had quick save back at like uh, the, the the lift and that was a perfect lift through the atmosphere um, but as it turns out that that wasn't really anything to worry about uh, I have a look around at my surroundings and well there we go we're done time to take off again now the main points that I took from learning to take off was to not do too much too far away from Apple apps um, my basic idea was I put my Apple apps above five kilometers uh, and then time warped. Well, I tried to time warp, but we couldn't below five kilometers. But and then waited until I got really close within 10 seconds or so of Apple apps and then just feathered my throttle up and down, trying to keep it about 10 kilometers away from me, uh, not 10, 10 seconds away from me, sorry, um, whilst also making burns and moving my periaps away just so we can keep our orbit as close to the surface of the moon as possible i believe this is all for the sake of the oberth effect um uh, not so much for saving delta v because you, you see the kerbal ship around the kerbal x ship there um that made similar maneuvers but didn't get too much further um but still obviously it had a lot of fuel but again, obviously, I think the, the greatest saving I made on this mission was through the atmosphere. T getting, a, getting a beautiful takeoff was definitely the, the problem there. Okay, so what I was doing with this maneuver node was I, I got a rough approximation of where I wanted to be. And then I just kind of, again, slipped it around the orbit until I found the point where the curb and periaps as low as possible. And then started using my mouse wheel to, to wheel up and down um, on the maneuver nodes one thing i have noticed that may help some of you people out there is when i am mouse wheeling up uh it takes much larger steps than when i'm mouse wheeling down so if you're looking for true precision try doing the opposite to what the maneuver node says so if you're trying to increase your delta v or increase your burn retrograde shall we say hover over the uh, prograde marker and scroll down you'll get a much finer detail so at this point here i am uh, loving the fact that this is the lowest i've ever been to the moon surface whilst flying by in fact i've just passed apple apps and we could literally reach out and touch some mountains uh, like the kerbals in the corner there absolutely loving it uh, and i was loving it as well to be fair I, like at this point i was fairly confident in my ability to get the Kerbals home. I could see how much fuel I had in my in my tanks and I could see well just how well um, how good an orbit we've done. I mean if you look at these two vessels here you can see the margins of error that are involved here. You just have to be so super tight doing this. Um, uh, that's, that's really the thing to take away from this mission. If you want to take the Kerbal X anywhere whoa don't take it anywhere before you take it places by that i mean make sure your orbits are as low as you can possibly go and obviously also as efficient as efficient as you can go make all your burns at apple apps or peri apps none of this messy in between business but anyway after that beautiful um demonstration of patched conics there we're going to just drop our way down to kerbin and feel, feel the joys of being able to finish this particular mission here i literally this took me all day to crack. Uh, I've, I've got 14 separate pieces of video uh, recorded, and I'm almost certain not all of those are single missions. So I should imagine I took something like 20 goes at this before I finally got it done, and it really was tough. Uh, there was no catastrophic failures. You know, we're not we're not talking like you know blew up on the pad or anything like that. But there's just there's a lot of stranded kerbals in orbit and, and things like that. All right, so final stages of the of the flight obviously we're coming down on parachutes this is this is slow this is boring i i, I always hate these bits i even tried to wait as long as i could but it, i was really worried about slamming this into the surface but there we go we've got all our guys home if you're not staying for the highlights i'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this uh, adventure i will see you next time but right now 
we're getting all these kerbals out to, to, to pose for a picture. I mean, obviously, we needed proof on the on the Facebook group that you, you managed to do this. Um, I grabbed a couple of screenshots on, on the moon, getting my way up into orbit, and now posing for the PR picture, basically. Uh, we, we might be on the night, night surface, but I'm fairly sure using the kerbal headlamps, we can get a nice little uh, light display going on. And indeed, we do so just here. And yeah, there we go. Right, well... With that, should we uh, have a look at some of the highlights of the of the rubbish missions? So my first launch was absolutely diabolical. Um, for starters, uh, I kept on f uh, missing the staging cues, like the, the the fuel pods would run out, and then I'd hit it a little bit too late. I mean, that was nothing major. The these things could be taken up, but the the major thing to see here is that my um, gravity turn was so. Uh, sti well, I want to say shallow, but I didn't turn enough, so it, uh, my ascent was so so steep that you will see here during our circularization burn, we are actually already through the entire lifting stage, which obviously meant we had all sorts of issues coming up to the moon. Um, uh, then when we were coming down over the periapsis, it was so far away that I was nullifying my speed when I was still like 16 kilometers off the floor. This, this was rubbish. Uh, obviously, this led to the scenario where being on the surface of the moon here, we didn't have enough fuel to take off and get ourselves into um, into orbit. Indeed, I give up as moment I notice that this is the case. Second attempt definitely had a lot more fuel in it, and I say a lot more, but you can tell by my fuel levels there that it really wasn't that much more. And indeed, we had like what what was that? A fart of a beginning of a of a burn uh, before having to switch to the poodle, which was a little bit vexing. But I still thought at this point that I could do it. You know, bearing in mind this was only my second attempt, I really thought this would be the one. Indeed, here we come for a textbook landing, and for some reason, well, I know what reason. I still had the SAS pointed on retrograde. Uh, the ship decides to turn itself on its side and I'm like oh well you know we've we can deal with this we can use the SAS to rocket back up and forth use the the, the um, landing legs to help as well but no that didn't help so we're going to get all the kerbals out to try and uh, lighten the load which takes a little bit of time um, until eventually we end up rat rattling it around to look in the right direction so that we can start like just taking off from the floor and I was starting to get really excited at this point, but unfortunately we ended up in interkerbin space um, and I, we just completely ran out of fuel to the point where I got a Kerbal out to start trying to push it round to, to, to see, just see if these EVA packs had enough to weight ratio to be able to like make any sort of dent whatsoever. Now bearing in mind we are 6 million meters away from the surface, well the, my periaps is, and we were gaining mere meters per second off of these EVA suits. It was terrible. I was no way going to wait for it. And I had this sneaking suspicion that if I'd made a landing like this, I would get disqualified for, you know, I don't know, not using the Kerbal X. Then I had one whose low curve in orbit was so eccentric that whilst I had a 100 kilometer apoaps on one side, my periaps was like so in the atmosphere that it was actually going to uh, bring me back down to the surface. So that was another fail. Then there was this mission, which I had assumed had a good launch, and it turns out later on, no, it hadn't, but that was a limitation in my knowledge there rather than um, anything else. But I was trying to perform a last minute suicide burn and we came in just a little bit too hot. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Then there was this one where I just missed the moon. Uh, there's no 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 way around that. I just completely missed the moon. Good work, Steve. And finally, for the highlights, we have this mission. This was the one that we left stranded in uh, Manula orbit. Uh, as you can see, the takeoff, or well, as you had seen, the takeoff wasn't exactly brilliant. And uh, well, we just we just didn't have the delta v. We were out of fuel by this point. Um, and and that was it. Thank you very much for joining me for this entirety of the adventures, guys. As I said, there were many more missions than what I've shown you here. Um, a lot of work went into this as it, as it goes. Uh, and, uh, I'm really quite glad with how it came out. I'm, I'm really glad that I managed to finish the challenge. I, I think I would have been hella embarrassed if I'd managed to go through an entire day of playing Kerbal without actually doing this and seeing proof that it could be done elsewhere. But anyway, yes, thanks for watching. I will see you later. Bye.